It's been more than a decade since Final Fantasy XIV originally launched, and nearly 10 years since the realm was reborn into the massively popular MMO it is today. Whether you're a longtime Final Fantasy fan or just interested in giving this critically acclaimed MMORPG a try, you'll discover that it's vastly different from both other MMOs and even other Final Fantasy games. To that end, we've created this beginner's guide to introduce any aspiring Warriors of Light to everything Eorzea has to offer. First off, it's important to note that there are a couple of ways to get started playing Final Fantasy XIV, the free trial and the full game. If you're curious and just want to see if the game is for you, the free trial will give you the base game, A Realm Reborn, and the first expansion, Heavensward, which total roughly 200 hours of story content, and there's no subscription if you're playing the free trial, so you can play for as long as you want before deciding whether or not to buy. However, there are a few restrictions in place for free trial players, most notably that you can't use the market board to buy other items from players, and you can't join free companies, which are Final Fantasy XIV's take on guilds. If you decide to just buy the full game, you're free to see everything it has to offer right from the start. There is a monthly subscription fee, though the first 30 days are free with your purchase, so you can always cancel if you decide it's not for you. Of course, unless you're trying to get through the story as quickly as possible, you can take your time in the free trial, and once you're ready to experience the full game, upgrade and then keep all of your progress. If you're coming from other MMOs, you may be used to selecting one class and committing to it across the game, maybe dipping into another later on if it lets you multi-class. In Final Fantasy XIV, however, you can play as every class all on one character. You can unlock and swap between them by changing your soul crystal with one for each class you unlock. If you start your adventure in the desert city of Alda, you can choose between the sword-wielding gladiator, the fist-fighting pugilist, or the staff-waving thaumaturge. Gridania and its forests will offer you the lancer, the conjurer's staff, and the archer's bow and arrow. Finally, the port town of Limsa Lominza has the axe-wielding marauder along with the magical arcanist. You can also unlock the rogue in Limsa Lominza, but you can't begin the game as one like you would with other classes. It's important to note that these classes eventually evolve into what are called jobs, usually around level 30. We'll get more into that later, but for those of you looking ahead as you plan your build, the gladiator becomes a paladin, the marauder evolves into the warrior, the pugilist becomes a monk, a dragoon is born of a lancer, rogues become ninjas, archers, bards, the arcanist can become either a summoner or a scholar, and the Conjurer and Thaumaturges become white and black mages respectively. Once you've gotten your first combat class up to level 10 and completed your third class specific quest, you're free to try any of the other classes or jobs in the game. Started as an archer but want to give healing a shot? Visit the Conjurer's Guild in Gridania and start on the path of a white mage. Is tanking a little too stressful? Switch to a summoner or a bard and learn the boss mechanics to bring him down from a distance. You'll also get double experience points for any class that's a lower level than your highest leveled class, and you can still make alternate characters if you want to play with friends on different servers. There are no drawbacks to playing multiple classes or jobs, so feel free to try anything that catches your eye. Just keep in mind that the Paladin, Warrior, White Mage, and Scholar require a bit more effort to master than the others, as they have to either tank enemy mobs or keep the party healed up in addition to doing damage. Outside of battle, Final Fantasy XIV also has a robust crafting system that lets you create everything from weapons and armor to food and jewelry. Just like with other jobs, you'll have to level your first combat class up to 10 to unlock them, but once you do, you can try one or try them all on a single character. And each of those classes has its own quest line, and you'll get a new quest every five levels. There are eight crafting jobs and three gathering jobs in total, so you have plenty of options to choose from. The system is more complicated than in many other RPGs though, so we've put together a separate beginner's guide to crafting and gathering that you can check out once you've got your feet under you. Once you've found a class you enjoy, you may want to take a small detour to the Hall of the Novice. Though you'll reach this series of small challenges naturally by progressing the main story, you can visit it earlier if you want. Once you hit level 15, just talk to the Smith NPC in your Starting Cities Adventurers Guild. You'll be spending a lot of your time in Final Fantasy XIV clearing dungeons and bosses, and the Hall of the Novice is a great way to learn dungeon mechanics like enmity and targeting, which is who your enemies are focused on and which enemies you're focused on respectively, before you commit to running a dungeon for yourself. You'll also earn a free set of gear for completing them all, along with a ring that provides a nice XP boost until you hit level 30. There are unique trials for each role, so if you're switching to a new one, be sure to check back and see if there's more to learn. Once you've gotten yourself comfortable with the mechanics of your preferred class, you're ready to hop into your first dungeon, Sestasha, which will unlock in the main story at level 15. You have two options for completing dungeons, using the duty finder and playing with real players, or playing with a team of AI using the duty support feature. Playing with AI will let you skip the wait for other players, but real players will usually get you through a dungeon much faster than the AI. There's not really a drawback to doing either, it's all about how you want to play. If you decide to play as a tank or a healer, you've got a few extra responsibilities to keep track of when you go dungeon diving. 
Tanks should keep anything dangerous pointed away from their friends with their AoE attacks, and healers should consider casting one of their attack spells to help speed things up if no one's dying. Otherwise, stay together and do as much damage as you can. If you're fighting more than two or three enemies at once, it's a good idea to try and spread your damage out between them. At the end of the dungeon, you'll get a random piece of gear along with any you successfully rolled on. Occasionally, you'll also have to complete a trial, which are large-scale boss fights that you'll come across usually in main quests, but occasionally in side quests as well. You'll start by tackling these in groups of four, but you'll be paired with seven other players later in the game. Think of them as more involved dungeon bosses, with more mechanics being used over the course of a fight. The most common mechanics are having to spread out or group together with your teammates, so try and get used to those as your first priority. Right when you accept that first dungeon quest, be sure to talk to the nearby waitress so you can also start the quest Rising to the Challenge. This will unlock the challenge log, a set of weekly objectives that will reward you with a large chunk of experience, and eventually gill the in-game currency if you complete them. Challenges are organized by category, like battling and crafting. You won't have access to all of these categories when you first unlock it, but you should always try to complete the battle challenges you do have access to to help you level that class faster. Remember that you'll only get experience points for your currently equipped class, so keep that in mind if you're trying to level several jobs at once. Though you can unlock a variety of cosmetic mounts further down the line, when it comes to getting your first mount, what could you want more than a chocobo? These cute yellow birds will happily carry you all across Eorzea, though sadly you won't be able to ride them in cities or dungeons. Not only will it ferry you across the world, but it can also join you in combat once you reach level 30. You can unlock your chocobo mount as soon as you join a grand company, which will usually be around level 20. You'll be rewarded with company seals when you do, which you can take to the quartermaster in exchange for a chocobo issuance. You won't be able to trade this for your new bird until you start the quest My Little Chocobo though, so be sure to pick that up from your grand company's headquarters as well. The quest itself takes about a minute to complete, and once you finish it, you'll be able to name and ride your new chocobo, though don't forget to use the whistle in your inventory, which is the only way to register it as your mount. If you've been playing for a bit, you may have noticed other players using classic Final Fantasy jobs like the Dragoon or the Black Mage. These players have upgraded their classes to jobs, which is the most important thing you can do once you reach level 30. Switching from a class to a job is basically a requirement, since you need the stats, skills, and gear that come along with upgrading. You'll also want to upgrade to a job as soon as possible so that you keep getting new skills once you pass level 50. You'll know it's time to upgrade when you reach level 30 with a given class and have completed the quest Sylph Management. You'll also have to complete all of that class's story quests, but once that's out of the way, you'll have a new quest waiting for you in your class guild. Finishing it will reward you with a job crystal, which you'll need to equip to get all the benefits of your new job. Just like with your class, every five levels you get a new job quest. Do these as soon as you can, because job quests give you new abilities as you level that'll come in handy as you play through the rest of the story. If you've opted to unlock the full game, upgrading a class to a job also lets you participate in Final Fantasy XIV's PvP mode, Crystalline Conflict. After equipping your job crystal, head to your grand company's headquarters to pick up the quest A Pup No Longer. Waiting for you in the Moraby Dry Docks will be a ferry to take you to the Wolf's Den, where all of the PvP content is located. It's important to know that PvP is an entirely different ballgame compared to what you've experienced already. Your abilities are completely different and your role will matter slightly less. The first thing you should do is set up your hotbar with your new skills, conveniently located in the PvP profile under Character. From there, you can practice those skills against the nearby training dummies. You'll earn a little experience for playing, and you'll also receive wolf marks, which you can then exchange for mounts, minions, and rare gear. As you can see, there is a lot to learn when taking your first steps into Final Fantasy XIV, so take your time and enjoy the ride. There's a lot to see and do when you start to play, and these tips only scratch the surface of how you can spend your time in Eorzea. In the meantime, be sure to check out our crafting guide, and for more Final Fantasy XIV tips, check out our full guide right here on IGN.